Hi, my name is Margaret. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to print statements. In order to be able to write any statements, I need to start by creating a Java program. Java is an object-oriented language. Every Java application consists of at least one class and at least one method, main. Here is an example of a Java class. You can see my class is the class name. In Java, the class name has to match the file name if you have a public class. This means if my class is called my class, it needs to be declared in a file myclass.java. Notice the curly braces. They delimit a code block. If you have a code block right below a class declaration, that is called a class body or the body of a class. Everything within those two braces belongs to the class. Here we have the main method. The main method is the entry point to a Java program. Notice the curly braces below main. This is once again a code block. If the code block is declared right below a method declaration, this is called the body of a method. And the code segment within the body of the method is executed whenever your method is called. Notice the different colors of the text. I matched the default settings of JGrasp. Purple indicates that you have a keyword. Keywords are reserved words they are spelled in all lowercase letters and they have special meanings. Orange indicates that you have a comment. Comments are totally ignored by Java and they are intended for human beings. Comments should make your code easier to read, easier to understand. Here for example, I'm pointing out one of the keywords, it is void. Void indicates that a method does not return any value. Each of those keywords has its special meaning. We're going to point them out over the next lectures. There's one more thing I want you to know, and that is that Java is a case-sensitive language. This means lowercase and uppercase letters are treated very differently. So my name, lowercase, and my name, uppercase, is not the same name. In Java, names of variables and methods are written in camel case. That means they start with a lowercase letter. If it's a compound word, the other words are written with a first letter uppercase. For example, if I would have a, a variable name that is called first name, I could write it like this. First name. So you can see the first letter is lowercase and then for each of the new words we start in the middle with the uppercase letter like camel case. Um, names of classes in Java are written in Pascal case, very similar to camel case but the first letter is an uppercase letter. So here I have my class, you can see uppercase M at the beginning, this is Pascal case, and then once again when a new word starts, we go back to an uppercase, my class. Now I'm going to create a class and the main method where we can write our print statements. Notice the file name. I chose demo print.java. That indicates that I'm planning to create a class called demo print. So here I start with a public class demo print, uppercase D, because this is Pascal cased, and matching my file name. Here is the body of my class. Right now it's empty, but we're going to add a method here. It's public static void main with a string array args as a parameter. Now here is my method body and I'm ready to write code statements. In Java we have three classes that we can use to print. One is called print, 
One is called print LN, that stands for print line, and one is called print F, that stands for is formatted printing. Print is just printing whatever I pass as the argument. Print line, very similar to print, but in addition it also advances to the new line. Print F gives me the most flexibility. It allows me to have placeholders. Uh, where I can fill in actual values and it allows me to specify the width of a column, the numbers of digits after decimal point and many more things. For now I'm going to start showing you some print statements with the two simpler versions print and printf. So here I say system out print and let's say I want to print 17. That's a number. I'm going to compile run it shows me 17. Now I'm going to do the same thing again print this time I say I want to print 21 I'm going to compile and what we see here is 1721 because we told the computer to print 17 first and immediately after 21. If this is not what I intended, if I wanted to have some separation between my numbers, I need to specify so I can say print out, uh, system out print, um, and this time I'm going to choose a string. This is a number of characters with a blank, some dots, another blank. And um, if I compile and run, I can say 17. The number followed by my string some blanks and dots and the other number 21. Now I'm going to show you how you can use print line. So let's say I have system out print line first line system out print line second line System out print line third line. I'm going to compile. At this point, I want you to imagine how the output is going to look like. And now, when I run it, let's check whether this matched your expectations. Notice how first line starts right after 21. This is the case because we did not specify anything in between. In my case, I prefer to have first line, second line, third line, all in separate lines. I can achieve this by changing my last statement to a print line statement. This prints 21 and advances the cursor to the next line ready to print uh, my next statement, which is a uh, printed string first line. So let's compile, run. Now I have my number space dot combination and then my three strings in separate lines. Notice how I grouped related statements in my code. Here I have my print statements with the numbers and blanks and dots. Here I have my first line to third line statements. There is an empty line to separate the two statement groups. I do not see an empty line in my output. I do not see an empty line because I did not specify an empty line. If this is what I want, I need to tell the computer so. So here I can say system out print line. Notice that the argument list is empty. I don't want to print anything. I just want to advance to the new line. So you can call print line with an empty argument list. You can never call print with an empty argument list. Every time you print, you have to specify what exactly you want to print. So let's compile and run. And now I have the output that I actually want. My 17.21 separated by a single empty line from those three statements down here. Now it is your turn.
Create a class that includes a main method. In the body of the main method, write three statements to display dog, cat, and fish. Pause the video. When you're done, press continue. Here is one possible solution. You can see I was writing three statements. One included dog, the other one cat, the third one fish. Notice the extra empty space I added after dog and cat because I want my three animals to be separated in the output. So here I'm going to compile and run and you can see dog, cat, fish. Here is a second challenge. Modify the code you just wrote so it will display dog, cat, fish, followed by lion and tiger in separate rows. Once again, pause the video. When you're ready, press continue. Here is a possible solution. Notice how I changed the print method to the print line method. This way I advanced to the next line after fish and then I was adding those two statements here. The print statement for lion and for tiger both use the print line method which always advances the cursor to the next line. So here I'm going to compile and run. You can see dog had fish in separate lines, lion and tiger.